Stop writing terrible offers. There's literally a 0% chance of them getting accepted in a seller's market. My name is Nick Rostopchin. I run a top producing real estate team right here in Southern Utah. And the advice that I'm about to share with you has helped hundreds of our home buyers become homeowners right here in St. George. So in the next eight tips, I will give you the recipe to get your next offer accepted. Before we jump into it, I'm gonna need you to do me a favor. Please make sure to hit that like button so that YouTube algorithms can share this video with more home buyers that need this help and need to hear this advice. And be sure to smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future videos. And if you're just beginning this journey, my team would absolutely love to take care of you. You can hit the link up here that will allow you to get your home search started. We're talking, we're talking about shopping for deals in this market. So shopping for deals in this market might not be the best idea that may not benefit you because oftentimes when you find that deal, it is, uh, thank you guys. I appreciate you uh, letting me know the mic sounds better. And I, I apologize for those of you early on in the stream if, uh, if my mic was just awful, but forgive me. Anyway, uh, shopping for this deal in this market might not be your best interest because what happens is if you're constantly looking for this next best deal that may be just too good to be true for the market, chances are it is. And while you're chasing that next best deal, you might just get priced out of something that was within the realm of what's possible. From what we're seeing, it seems like things are just continually going up and up and up in value. And it can't go on indefinitely, but... The, the, the purpose of this video is the immediate need. Like, let's say you're looking to make something happen right now. So I would say, you know, and, and going into my next point, you have to have clear expectations. You have to kind of understand uh, what can you afford. If, if there's a mortgage involved, it's good to talk to your loan officer to figure out exactly what your uh, principal with um, interest and taxes and insurance, if you're asking those things, what is that going to look like from a monthly pay payment perspective? You know, just making sure that this is something you could actually afford and something that fits in well within the rest of your budget, as well as figuring out, okay, like this is what a six hundred and fifty thousand dollar or this is what a one point two million dollar home looks like. Are you okay with that? Is that is that a realistic thing? Because if you have the expectation of being able to get into something that's really worth more like one point two million, but your budget is around six fifty you may be forever disappointed and you may again get priced out of this market. My next point is be ready to perform. It's important to spend some of that time for your initial due diligence, figuring out which neighborhood do you want to be, which neighborhood can you afford, which neighborhood works best for your needs, which neighborhood is within that ideal uh, socioeconomic status, you know, you go through all of those things by typically just kind of driving around or figuring out where you want to be. And then once you're comfortable with, okay, yes, we can afford this home in this price range in the neighborhood that works for us. Great. You may be ready to make the decision. You may be ready to perform. Uh, another thing that goes into it is a lot of our clients are in position where they're selling a home and they're selling a home, let's say in Seattle, Washington, or in Portland and Oregon, um, in California, most of these markets in the Pacific West are still really, really hot. And a lot of people get this almost like overconfidence. I know that my home is going to sell in a week or less because my neighbor's home just sold in that period of time. However, it is not on the market yet. We need to find something first. And what often happens in those scenarios, you find something you really love, but the seller may not be open to a contingency offer because five other people really love that property. So my best advice for those of you that are just beginning your shopping and you haven't quite yet, you know, maybe you haven't staged your home, maybe you haven't even talked to a real estate agent. My best advice to you is be in the ready position. So if you're, if you're coming to Southern Utah, you're looking at something, it is best to have your home, or maybe you're moving here, maybe you're, you're downsizing or maybe you're upgrading, whatever the case may be, it is best to have your home in a ready position where, you know, even if the market timing is seven to 14 days, like here in St. George or wherever you may be moving from, you have to be in that position where if you know you can list your home in the market, it's going to go under contract or you may get a couple of offers to choose from, 
when you're presenting this contingent offer, and folks, when I say contingent offer, it could mean different things in different states. Here in Southern Utah, contingent offer means that it's an offer that is contingent on the sale of a residence prior to you being able to purchase another residence. So there's some, um, some contract provisions that protect you as a buyer, but also these contract provisions make your offer, in some cases, less appealing to the seller because it gives you room to escape in the event, especially in the event of the sale of your home falls apart. So can't stress this enough. If you're thinking about making a contingent offer in this highly competitive market, it is a weaker offer. And what makes it better for the seller is if your home is already under contract. Avoid those offers as much as possible in order to be successful and not have to give up too much ground. Make sure you're making a compelling offer. So it's good to have a person you could trust, you know, a real estate agent that could do market analysis for the neighborhood that could kind of tell you what things have been selling for. And another thing that's great to watch is list to close ratio like the the list to close ratio that i was talking about earlier when we're looking at numbers most deals happen within just a fraction of a percent you know plus or minus really really close to asking price often over asking price now this is just a general market approach if we look at the market as a whole if we look at the total number of sold listings that sold in february you can see that majority of these sales were in like five hundred to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar price range. So, for instance, um, a number of active listings. This is actually a better thing to look at. Number of active listings. The volume really increases right here from half a million to seven hundred forty nine thousand. The reason that happens is an average. Average builder, you know, people that are, are helping inventory, people that are building spec homes, the, the general rule of thumb is in order to not overprice or underprice a spec, you would want to price the final product, the home, about four times the value of the lot. So land is becoming more expensive and so do the supplies. So it, it kind of makes sense that majority of that inventory that is available right now is really getting out there in price. So this is where you're going to start to see more inventory, and this is where deals may begin to happen closer to reality. Although, I have been bid out on, we offered, one of my clients wanted to offer on a home that was in the $750,000 price range. We offered fifty grand over asking, and our offer got bid out. So those things are still happening. Now, going back to my point about making a compelling offer, it, it often makes sense to see what else is on the table and if the listing agent is willing to share that and the timing of your offer. The timing of your offer is probably by far even, even more important. We find that when our clients make an offer on a listing within 12 to 24 hours after it hitting the market, there's a great chance that you're not fighting with many other multiple offers that just go completely outside of what's realistic you know often people get in this bidding frenzy and they start to bid it's almost like <laughs> it doesn't make sense it almost like people try to bid just to be the winning bidder you know like when those 99 cent items on ebay get bid up like way way outside of what they should be worth similar mentality sometimes comes into play with houses doesn't make a ton of sense but I have seen it before where people get into you know multiple offer scenario and they try to just go way over asking. So the sooner you show up to the party, the sooner you're able to make a compelling, straightforward offer without many moving parts, without many concessions, something that puts the seller at ease because the sellers in this market are often getting burned by people that are making multiple offers on multiple properties. And <clears throat> depending on how the contract is structured, the state of Utah allows for the buyer during their due diligence period to basically cancel for any reason. So it could be, let's say, if your due diligence period on your contract is 14 days, that's the time that you have for your inspections. And it also gives you the ability to jump off for any reason. So imagine how frustrating it is to be a seller that has had multiple offers. And then sometimes, if not cho chosen carefully, you know, people get excited about multiple homes, and then sometimes after trying to offer on one after the other after the other, an offer is not getting accepted. 
they get aggressive enough to where they get into the sweet spot. And sometimes they end up with offering on multiple houses at the same time and multiple offers getting accepted, which is a bad situation to be in. So it burns out the sellers and the sellers often like to see, you know, even your offer doesn't always have to be the strongest in terms of, you know, you don't have to offer a ridiculous amount of money over asking, but if you give the seller some security in a form of maybe non-refundable earnest money, a non-refundable portion of your earnest money deposit after just three days instead of 14. I have seen sellers that feel more comfortable. They know that you mean business. They know that you're probably not going to jump off. And if you do, it will happen within the first three or four days. So there's your golden advice in the event if you are getting in a scenario where, where you have to, you have to prove to the seller that your offer is going to be every bit as competitive and maybe even stronger in terms of security for the seller, especially if if your buying power is limited by your pre-approval or the amount of cash that you're bringing to the table. Another another interesting point for buyers is what if you just can't find the one that you love? And sometimes across all price ranges in this market. So to give you guys an idea, when I'm talking about limited inventory, let me show you something. Our entire market has just 394 listings and that's across uh, all of St. George and all of Hurricane Valley. So out of 394 homes, often, you know, even if you get up there in a price range, it is just tough to find the one you love. So what happens then? Well, it helps if your budget is over a million dollars. If it's below, then sometimes you just have to be patient and hopefully you can still find the one you love and you're ready to perform. If your budget is over a million dollars, we work with several builders and developers and we could, you know, use more of a custom home approach or we could find a spec home. Because of the supply crisis and uncertainty in the economy and prices, a lot of builders don't advertise their spec homes on the market until they're about 30 to 60 days out from completion because it allows for them to not have these one key contracts. They're often single sided and protect the builder more so than the buyer. So a lot of builders, which we have a great relationship with, don't advertise their homes on the MLS. So sometimes in, in certain price ranges, I mean, all the way up to the millions, you may be looking on the MLS and there's just nothing that you love. You just have to talk to the right people. We'll find you the right option. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you found advice in this video helpful, please drop me a comment below. If you have more questions about challenging situations you may be running into in your home buying journey, please drop them in the comments below. I'm sure that either myself or one of my team members had encountered something similar to that. And if you need help buying a home in Southern Utah or anywhere in Utah for that matter, please feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is all over this channel. There's also a link down below that will take you to our website to allow you to browse all of Southern Utah real estate inventory. Thank you so much for all of the love and support and I will see you in the next one. Bye.